Today we're gonna do some macro photography with this camera, the Panasonic GM5, which is a nine-year-old camera, pretty old. I bought mine for only $30 because <laughs> the scroll wheel here at the back is broken. Uh, but besides that, it works pretty fine. And uh, I have a slightly more expensive lens, the Laowa 50mm, goes to two times magnification, it's around like three or four hundred dollars. You can use my discount code to get it cheaper, check the video description. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do some macro photography with this today and see what we can get and see if it is possible to get nice photos with such an old and cheap camera. So yeah, let's find out. This, by the way, is the world's smallest interchangeable lens camera with a viewfinder, at least that I know of. And I think it's such a shame that they discontinued this line of cameras. Uh, I mean, one of the big points for me with Micro Four Thirds is that the camera can be very small together with a very small lens. But these days they only make big, huge Micro Four Thirds cameras. And then a lot of the point of having a Micro Four Thirds camera is missing, at least if you ask me. Let's try to get some ant shots. The viewfinder is really bad obviously because they had to fit it in such a small camera but it works and together with the pretty nice focus peaking on this camera it's, it's kind of usable. It's really cold today, only like 14 degrees celsius. Still there seems to be quite a lot of insects around. Small ladybug. This is an extremely tiny ladybug. And by the way, it was not my meaning to break off this branch. I'm sure I will get some angry comments about that, but it wasn't really my meaning. I just wanted to bend it a bit and it broke off. Sorry about that. The diffuser, as you can see, is just a piece of um, Pringles tube. And then I cut off some white plastic and glued it to the front. I've noticed that this kind of white plastic is some of the best diffuser material to get good nice soft light sometimes earlier i used like transparent packing foam but that is not as good i have found if you want to get the softest nicest diffusion possible and then i simply taped it to the flash pretty temporary solution but it works So we're starting to see some flowers here on the field, which is great. We're getting closer and closer to midsummer, the brightest day of the year. And that is typically when insect life here in Stockholm, where I live, tends to peak. So these are really some of the best days to be out in the year for me. These days you see lots of larvas everywhere, a lot of insects about to be born. The trees are full of these. One major drawback with this camera is that the maximum shutter speed with a flash is 1 50th of a second. And uh, that's not that fast and 
Sure, in most cases it works great, but when there is too much sunlight in the scene, it makes for some motion blur. So, gotta be careful with that. Extremely tiny and very cool creatures. What are these? Please inform me. I guess they are not fully grown. <laughs> Only like three millimeters long. Yeah, it's really nice that this camera has a viewfinder. This is why I bought this camera. It's a super duper small camera with an electronic viewfinder. But the viewfinder is very bad. It's hard to see if the picture is sharp and it's very small. Uh, but yeah, it's enough for focusing. But I think we will have to ask indoors Michael whether the pictures are any good or not. Please tell us indoors Michael. You live in the future, you have looked at the photos. Are they any good? Is there any point with buying such a cheap camera for macro photography? Hello there, indoors Michael here. And about once a year I get this very strong urge to go out and shoot with the GM5. Because I guess I love the idea of such a small, compact, cute camera. There's just something very attractive about that to me. And uh, last year I was disappointed with the image quality when I had been out with a GM5 doing macro photography. Uh, but this year I was thinking maybe last year I had a bad diffuser. Because I had been using this kind of material for my diffuser the last time. So I thought that maybe this material is not good enough. I've found that the best kind of material you can find for a diffuser is white plastic. Like whiter than this one, more solid than this one because it spreads the light more evenly. So I decided to make a new front for my tiny Pringles diffuser made out of this white plastic. But now when I'm looking at the photos, they still aren't great. This sensor I think is just too old, too bad. This is the old uh, 16 megapixel sensor that was in Panasonic cameras around 10 years ago. And uh, there is quite a big difference, I have to say, between this old sensor and the newest Micro Four Thirds sensors, especially the ones in the Olympus cameras. Like, I mean, my OM1 camera, I think that one has a lot nicer colors. I think the biggest problem with this sensor is that the colors are a bit too bleak, not nuanced enough, not nice looking enough. Uh, th there is not enough depth in the colors, uh, I think. And also a big problem with this camera is the maximum shutter speed with a flash 1 50th of a second. When it is a bright day, too often that becomes a problem because you get motion blur because there is too much light coming in from the sun and uh, it kind of overpowers the flash and then you get motion blur. Uh, but there are a couple of photos that I took on this walk that I'm happy with. For example, this ant photo, I, I think it's really nice. And I would not be able to tell the difference uh, between this photo taken with a GM5 and the same photo taken with a much more expensive camera. So, I mean, my conclusion would have to be that if you are on a very tight budget, you should definitely buy a old used camera like this and start with that because you can take nice photos with it. Uh, but if you have the money, spend maybe around $400 on the camera, maybe a used mirrorless Sony camera for example, or a used Olympus camera, you have a great value for money there and that is where I would maybe look. Also I think I made a mistake with the diffuser. Uh, now when I look at the video, I can see that the angle here is not optimal because um, I'm usually focusing around here somewhere at two times magnification and then the light is kind of going this direction. Uh, I should have had a steeper angle, it should have been something like this. I should have cut it like this so that it protrudes a bit more because then the light would n hit more nicely. It would be closer to the subject, which is uh, an important aspect of good light. And also 
it would have a 45 degree angle towards the subject, which is also kind of optimal, I think, for insect photography. So I simply need to be more thoughtful and not uh, just haste everything together all the time. <laughs> well, well, I learn and you learn with me. That's it for Indoors Michael. Over to you, Outdoors Michael. Thank you for those insights, Indoors Michael. Let's take some more photos. This feels a little bit like analog photography, in the sense that it's really hard to know whether the photo you just took is good or not. In this case, because the viewfinder is so bad, so it's really hard to see whether it turned out good. Uh, but uh, that makes for more excitement when you get home and get to look at the photos, because you don't really know what you have. Some tiny, tiny larvas here. Let's see if we can get a good shot. I often get the question uh, about how important image stabilization is in macro photography and I usually answer that it's not at all necessary, it's like a nice to have. And uh, here I definitely have zero image stabilization and it's still pretty easy to take photos and it's still pretty easy to take nice looking photos. So it's definitely not anything you need even though it makes the picture appear a bit more stable when you're taking the photos and that can make it a bit more easy to do the composition, especially if you are a beginner, but not at all required. A benefit with doing macro photography when it's really windy and a bit chilly like today is that when you encounter an insect sitting on a leaf here, you can be pretty sure that it will continue to sit there as you take photos. Because if the wind didn't scare it off, neither will your camera. I've never caught two weevils in the act before. Really happy about that. Hope I got at least one good shot. Black shiny bugs are always really hard to capture in a good way. They never look as good in a photo as they do in real life, unfortunately. So I've almost kind of given up on photographing them. <laughs> Can someone tell me what that is? I don't think I've ever photographed one before. It was extremely small, like two millimeters long. Very deep red.
So yeah, I almost did not go out today because it's so cold so I thought that I wouldn't find many insects but I was wrong and I'm very happy that I did go out, found lots of insects. As long as the season is right, as it is right now, I guess it's okay if it is a bit colder you will still find plenty of insects. Thanks for watching, see you soon again.